first of all, welcome. Thanks for for uh, doing this. Um, yeah. And and actually, let me tell you what what I'm aiming for. We're gonna have uh, this full interview. I kind of maybe you know neaten it up a little bit, but but just the full thing. And then I'm gonna pull out hopefully like a minute of you saying something profound. Wow. Um, so I hope you got something like that in you. It'll be more like two seconds worth. <laughs> well, uh, well, if two seconds here, two seconds there, I'll put it together and I'll yeah. make it sound good. Um, yeah. I don't always know what's going to happen. Sure. So I just, I just let it emerge, right? I'm interested in just hearing what what your story is and what you know, the uh, really how how your life has has changed uh, because of the PDC. Yeah. Uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll so we'll have that one minute clip, we'll have the full interview, and then we'll have like a page that you know has three bullet points. This is what he's done, farm manager now here, doing this, doing that, and then kind of tell a little story. Sure. You know, Scott used to do this, now he does that, or the permaculture gave him you know extra tools to to do this or that. So so yeah, let's let's uh, let's. Let's, let, me, let me go with what you just said you wanted and let me kind of give you the story of uh, sure sure yeah what's what's your story yeah so i had decided to uh take the permaculture design course because i had been in essence practicing uh permaculture uh for about 20 years or more uh, i'd always had aspirations of being a farmer when i was young and of course you know i had images of uh, the big monoculture thousand acre farm type thing i didn't know any better at the time but i knew i loved the land i loved nature and and always uh even as a young child was in the garden um and uh, that's what i loved to do somehow i didn't have the resources to do that so i had this um not too uh smart plan that i would go make some money so i could afford then to buy a farm and be a farmer <laughs> instead of going and, and doing it for somebody else or what have you and it's been a lot of years i'm 56 years old now so it's been almost two years ago that i went to the permaculture design course so i was about 54 when i finally decided to do this but over the previous 20 years had been a practicing lawyer i was at least able to start doing some of these things on my own we lived in arizona at the time i had two irrigated acres and because two acres is not a whole lot, I had to learn on my own how to make something out of two acres. And so I started studying things like, um, uh, you know, soil building, uh, how to uh, cover crop and uh, add organic matter and compost. And just on my own, I started learning a lot about um, how to take a measly two acres and really be pretty productive. And on that two acres, we did everything from a very substantial organic garden to uh, we raised steers, we had sheep, we had goats, we had chickens, turkeys, ducks, you name it, we raised it. And we did that all on two acres in Arizona. Uh, and it was uh, very productive. I um, got to where I learned on my own really how to uh, increase the soil quality, uh, a lot of cover cropping. And these are things that I did just reading and doing it. And of course, eventually you read these sorts of things, you stumble on the term permaculture, whatever that nebulous word means. <laughs> and uh, I read a few books on permaculture. And um, initially, I was going to take a course out in uh, California, Grass Valley, California. Uh, there's a yoga ashram out there. I, I practiced a lot of yoga and uh, saw that there was a permaculture design course out there. And for whatever reason, I was unable to take that course at that time but it was offered by Midwest Permaculture. And so that led me to their site and I ended up on their site. And I thought, well, Missouri, that's, uh, that's just as good. Not really, but we didn't do much yoga out here, but I chose to uh, uh, take that uh, course in, uh, at Heal the Planet Farm and it was life-changing. Mm. Uh, so uh, I'm sure it would have been equally as life-changing out in Grass Valley, California, but, um, the Ozarks was an area that I'd always kind of planned to settle down in. I grew up in Northern Virginia and the area is very similar here to um, the hill country where I grew up in Northern Virginia. So it's closer to where my wife's family is from and we had targeted this area anyway. So long story short, I came out here and as I've already mentioned, 
I had been uh, practicing law for about 20 years. Um, again, my plan to uh, become a farmer was very circuitous and uh, took me to uh, the Air Force to get some education, took me to Germany, got about 12 years of college in the meanwhile, and uh, was really not a direct path to, to where I am today. But at any rate, I finally uh, was thoroughly fed up with what I was doing and just decided, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to follow my path. And that path was through uh, the permaculture design course here at Heal the Planet Farm. So I came out here and had pretty much decided at that point that I was going to just close my office in um, Arizona. And in fact, at that time when I introduced myself to the class, as we all did, I explained that I was a practicing lawyer, but just so they didn't throw things at me, I made it clear that I was uh, transitioning out of that. Uh, and so anyway, I did um, December of last year, 2016, uh, that is, I closed my office with little or no notice to clients, just let them know that I was uh, going in this direction and uh, closed my office and, um, and did it. But a big part of that decision was made as part of the permaculture design course. Mm -hmm. The knowledge that I got at the permaculture design course was, for the most part, just stuff that I'd already heard and it was um, confirming, you know, the things that I had studied on my own. It was a good time to sit down and get a lot of confirmation of things that I had learned on my own. So it wasn't the permaculture principles themselves that really was life-changing for me. It was really the um, being out here, uh, the um, hearing Bill's story, hearing Jordan Rubin's story. Um, Jordan is the owner of the Heal the Planet Farm. Our first day, uh, he gave a very inspirational talk that happened to be about uh, kind of fi finding your calling and doing it. And um, here I was groping for a way to just follow my heart and do this. And here's this guy who's saying, follow your heart and find your vision and do it. And likewise, uh, Bill told his story, uh, how he got to do or got to the point of doing what he did was uh, rather circuitous as well and uh, they were very inspirational it was very encouraging for me to follow the dreams that I had and so what I got out of the permaculture design course was less the hardcore techniques of permaculture um, a lot of that I already had it was confirmation of those things and it was more the um, the, the inspiration to just do what I know I needed to do. Oddly mm -hmm. enough, I closed my office within a couple of days out of the, let me restate that. I closed my office in December of 2016 and had planned to uh, move out here fairly quickly, but my, um, my mother was uh, going through some health issues. She was dying. Uh, my father had some serious health issues. So it took a little while for me to actually get out here but we purposed to do that. And within a day or two of announcing that I was closing my office, I had an offer at a farm out in Arizona to work and manage that. So right mm -hmm. out of the blue, when I, when I made the choice to do this, of course, doors start opening and it gave me uh, some ability. It was only a 12 acre farm, but they had pecans and a greenhouse. And I was um, out of the blue, just managing this farm. So it was a good transition to get out here. Um, ultimately then, um, I, um, was offered a job out here at Heal the Planet Farm to manage it. And so, uh, you know, it's ironic how the things that we go through prep us for sometimes things we never anticipate, but, um, Jordan Rubin was looking for somebody that maybe had some ability to do some of the management and documentation of things. Um, yes, had some knowledge in permaculture and agricultural things, but he has good people out here that know that anyway. Mm. Uh, so they were looking for people uh, or for somebody to come out here and maybe handle some of the more um, business uh, oriented things, uh, documentation of things. And he hired me then as the general manager of the farm. I prefer the term business manager. Uh, we have uh, very capable staff out here that handles more of the day in, day out 
mm -hmm. agricultural aspects of the farm, the mechanics of it all. Uh, and um, I like to focus more on, well, I'd like to be out there doing that as well, but I'd like uh, to focus on streamlining the practices business-wise, and that's, that's what I hope to focus on more and more. Um, let them do their jobs. Yes, I get out. I, right now I'm spending about seven hours a day actually hands-on on the farm, but more and more, of course, I'll be uh, doing the business ends of it. So um, that circuitous route I took to get here really gave me some skills that ultimately um, allowed me to plug in here and and do some things that they um, would like. Um, it was life changing. It really was. It was uh, it just mainly in the sense that it um, it convinced me to do what I knew I had to do to follow my path and my dreams. Uh, in fact, I also knew my son needed to come take it. He had gone through college, had done some jobs that uh, he really, you know were were lucrative, but maybe not fulfilling. And I urged him early on to follow his heart. Uh, I knew he had to come out here and take the course that it would be life changing for him. And it was, he came out here and he took the course, uh, in, I believe it was October of 2017. And, uh, he stayed on here at the farm and is now, um, now working, doing things that he loves. Mm. And so, um, it really changed, uh, uh, two lives. In fact, more than that, my wife is out here with me. Uh, we have a place of our own, a small six acre place. Uh, but we're doing um, transforming that into a permaculture oasis. So um, taking that course had a lot of probably unintended consequences or unanticipated consequences, at least from um, um, Bill's intention. I mean, he probably has done this enough where um, he, he doesn't know what to anticipate. Maybe he probably comes in here and uh, expects something different is going to be um, the outcome in everyone's, uh, every student's lives. So, um, at any rate, for me, it was, uh, really rebooting, uh, my whole life course, putting me on the road to the destination, you know, that ultimately I knew I needed to go in mm -hmm. and it was, uh, all related to the permaculture. So that's my story. I knew you had some questions of your own, but I figured, <laughs> well, uh, I I have to figure out how many of the questions you already answered through that story. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's why I suggested telling the story because I knew where you were going. I knew what yeah. you were looking for. And I figured, well, let's, uh, let's cut to the chase. Yeah. Well, let's see. I, I think that, that knocks off my first four questions. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm interested in, in what's, going on um you kind of talked about this a little bit but the the social permaculture side of things i uh i think that that the 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 permaculture in the physical landscape is somewhat obvious yes right you know we we follow that pattern for the most part but it, i think uh in, in a in a social setting um it impacts each of us differently. Like you're, you know, a lawyer, and you're looking to to kind of move along, uh, to change change the scenery, change change the way you're you're living in the world. Um, yes. And so and so, uh, I'm curious how permaculture might have helped you do that, or uh, maybe any observations you have about uh, permaculture and the so social side of permaculture. Well, in reality, um, and ironically, that's an area that um, just this morning I was thinking that I'm really lacking in. Um, that, um, in fact, I've got a call uh, to Bill when we're done and uh, plan on uh, chatting with him a little bit about that, among other things, um, because that's an area that I'm, I'm really sort of lacking. When I was out here on the course, I, I met some good friends, uh, even though we have such a disparate um, range of uh, personalities and backgrounds as I'm sure every class does. Um, I made a lot of good friends and uh, I, I, I'm kind of an interesting type of person anyway where you know here I was a lawyer and you'd think certain things with that but really uh, my inner hippie was rising to uh, kill the lawyer and ultimately did so. Um, <laughs> but uh, the point is um, I, I didn't get to follow up a lot socially with that because Partly, I was even though I was wrapping up or closing down an office, 
um, it was still my business that was taking a huge amount of time. And um, I, I um, and I found out that when I walked away from that or tried to walk away from it, it really tied me down even more for a whole year. It took me mm. a year to really wrap things up and uh, things still crop up, calls from old clients, that sort of thing. Uh, but for the first year, I ran, went from working in my office on my practice to working uh, full-time on a farm, managing a farm, very uh, um, uh, demanding job, um, handling my own uh, place, plus the death, or die, you know, a dying mother and the father with yeah. um, uh, serious uh, health issues, uh, caring for them. Uh, and suddenly I thought I was walking away from a law practice that I hated and, uh, the, the, what it took to actually do that was, uh, really twice the work of, of just going into the office. So it really bogged me down and I didn't get to maintain a lot of the contacts, uh, couple that with the fact that I totally just got away from social media because I got so tired of hearing who hated Trump and who hated Hillary that I just yeah. finally just said sayonara. Um, and so uh, I don't have a lot of the contacts in the permaculture community that I really kind of wish I had um, and uh, possibly will will be able to, to develop. Even now I'm on a farm working for uh, this um, permaculture oasis out here at Heal the Planet Farm. And uh, you would think that uh, that would open a lot of doors socially, but in reality, uh, between drive time and whatnot. I, I am, you know, 12 hours a day on this farm mm. or at least away from home. And it doesn't leave me a lot of time for, for the social interaction. That's something that I do sort of crave and need to try to get, get rolling, uh, reestablish. But, you know, you close down one whole life and start another one, new place, new, um, uh, new, new career. Um, everything virtually. I mean, we literally sold everything or gave away everything we had and uh, moved out here with virtually no furniture and uh, moved out here and started a brand new life. Mm. So uh, socially uh, too, uh, we did that. So I'm trying to become more and more uh, involved in the community where we are, but the time is just prohibitive. So that is an area that I need to, uh, focus on a little more because uh, the social aspects of it is um, are, are very important. Yeah, it, uh, I, I found uh, that's a, a place to really, if you can stack functions with the other things that you're doing, that the social aspect is just part of your work. Right. Um, yes. that's, that's been super, super useful. Uh, yes. then, it, then it's not like you're working at all and you just... Yeah go do your thing and hang out with people and yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and unfortunately this job is not quite that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, my, uh, um, social contacts late, although we have a close knit group here at the farm, uh, in fact, very close. I, I mm -hmm. think we all get along very well. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, it's limited to, to that and, uh, we're all out doing our own things and, and, um, and then we're very, um, you know, we're far away from any, um, anyone else. Um, and as, you can tell, and, and as you can tell, even from trying to hook up and do this, uh, the, the, um, technology here is, uh, behind a little bit. So even, even doing an interview like this is, is difficult. And, um, so anyway, it does, it does put some, um, restraints on, uh, the social aspect of it. So I try to do what I can here. In fact, we yeah. um, here at the farm, like t tonight, we're having a community dinner where, you know, the, those that are interested will um, uh, share a dinner. And we try to do that at least once a week. So some socialization with uh, those here that I work with. Uh, but um, the uh, as far as any outsiders, that sort of thing, uh, it's been difficult. So that is that is an area that I want to try to get um, uh, rolling a little better. And for all of us, really, for all of us here on the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what did you think of uh, the teachers of your PBC? How did, how did that, that work, 
how did that work for you? Was it was it uh, you know delivered in a stimulating, useful manner? Yes, yeah, surprisingly so. Um, and I say that because uh, I guess I don't know what I really expected. Um, it was uh, Bill has a very good, and he was the primary instructor. Um, yeah. But Bill has a um, a way of offering things in an academic sort of setting. So yes, there was a lot of lecture type um, in instruction, but also in a way that doesn't seem like a lecture. And he had some uh, multimedia, there were videos that, that he would uh, throw in there to uh, mix things up, some hands-on things. So he did a very good job of the multimedia presentation so it didn't mm -hmm. just become bored or boring. Um, the, um, so the instruction was very good. It was very well delivered and enough variety to uh, keep one's interest. Um, and again, this is coming from somebody who um, the material was not new, at least in right. my case. Um, I had studied a lot on my own. I mean, many, many hours of, of uh, uh, you know, dozens of books um, on my own. And um, I've got to say that even though the material for the most part was not new to me, um, he kept it interesting. And so it was very worthwhile, even for someone who was coming in with a pretty good basis of knowledge already. Okay. Um, how do you think about the, uh, the, the, the price of the course versus kind of the, the uh, you know, how, how was the investment in the course? How did that pay? Did it pay? Did, did um, well, you know, there's people that complain about the cost of a course being too high, that it's not worth, worth the time at all. Um, and, well, it was certainly worth my time. And then in retrospect, it, it ultimately in a roundabout way got me this job. So, um, so the, the payoff, if you look at dollars and cents, was definitely worthwhile. Um, but, um, and I was also in a situation where because of the career that I was in, money wasn't an issue. Mm. Uh, still, I'm not a frivolous person and, and I don't uh, throw money away. I don't, um, you know, I, I tend to uh, be uh, very frugal. Uh, so if I didn't think it was worthwhile, I um, wouldn't have done it. In retrospect, having taken it, uh, it was worth every penny. Um, I um, I understand, uh, you know, they're out here for a week um, teaching these classes. That's a lot of time. And, and uh, uh, some of it was 10 or 12 hours a day, as I recall. Yeah. And I know from having taught a lot of things, I, I've taught um, in, um, uh, I've taught college classes before, mostly business and law related courses. And I can tell you my, um, recollection just from that is, I mean, you better count on at least an hour of prep time for every hour that you're in class. So uh, if you look at the class instruction time, uh, the time it took for them to get out here, the uh, fact that these facilities cost money to own and operate, I thought that the, uh, the, the cost was well worthwhile. You couple that with the fact that they do have some um, ways to make it affordable to people who can't. Um, they have a work study program where uh, you can work for, I believe it's seven weeks and that pays for your tuition. Um, and so they do make it accessible to some people that uh, otherwise wouldn't be able to, uh, to do that. And um, I've got to say, I've worked with, since I've been here um, as a manager on the farm, I've worked with a few of their work study uh, people and, um, found them very capable. Mm. Um, there was one in this last class that uh, if I could have convinced her to stay on, I absolutely would have. Mm. Uh, so it's not like just people that, uh, you know, are out here just uh, looking for a free ride. I mean, they work hard and uh, they earn their keep. And uh, like I said, at least the ones that I've encountered uh, for the most part were, um, it, it was an e even trade for uh, the class for the work that that uh, they performed. That may not always be the case. I don't know about uh, past um, some of the past people that have done the work study, but I got to tell you, uh, the ones that I encountered uh, since I've been here were uh, definitely worth having out here. Mm. 
so they try to make the uh, courses a little more um, a little more affordable uh, for those who can't afford it. Um, that being said, um, maybe there's ways to explore other means to make the classes affordable to people. Um, perhaps portions of them can be offered online beforehand. I, I don't know. There's uh, there's always ways to maybe make things like that a little more accessible. Well, and, and for a lot of people, it's not just the, the price, it's the, the time and getting away. Right. Uh, and and so for me, it was, uh, yeah, I had to uh, travel out here um, um, from Arizona, uh, spend uh, over a week out here. In fact, I spent about two weeks out here uh, and um, in a practice, but, you know, I'm still still had my doors open at that law practice. Mm -hmm. And so uh, being out of the office cost me thousands of dollars a day. So, I mean, for me, that trip <laughs> probably cost me $15,000, um, uh, including the tuition. And I still say it was worth every bit of it. Mm. But, you know, that was my path at the time. I, um, I knew this is where I needed to come, and um, I did, and it was worth every penny. I think there's something about the permaculture design course that especially lends itself to, to shifting. You know, if you're, yes. if you're at a, a time in your life when, uh, when you're ready to make a transition, uh, it, it, it does something. You know, that all, just all together, that, that yes. time, oh, time away and the content, uh, I think it assists. In that, and it's, yeah. it's not clear exactly how. It's I think it, it's just some various ways for various people. Yes, you right. know. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it was. Uh, I was ready to make a change, and this was mm -hmm. the direction I wanted to go. And so, sure, doing that sort of thing is is a, a good um, a good transition. Um, you know, a uh, oh, what's the term? Um, um, at any rate, there's a times in your lives where you need uh, something to memorialize this this change you know mm. and, and uh, you know for me yeah the class was a big big part of that uh, uh, you know that big leap of faith so to speak I mean ultimately it was closing the doors to the uh, to the office but um, yeah it was uh, it was really saying look I'm taking that two weeks gonna come out here and do this permaculture design course and yes that's a part of me then ultimately closing the office it took about seven months I think for the office actually to get closed down but it was coming out here and doing this that really was the um, that was the step everything else was uh, just uh, tying up loose ends yeah hmm uh... Is there anything that surprised you about about permaculture or uh, about this change in direction? Something that maybe you thought was going to be different than it, than it turned out to Not be? Not really. Other, other than um, I think the one surprise, and even though I work here on the farm, it's still a surprise to me, is I, I think of permaculture more along the lines of um, – you know, people taking their own little homesteads, be it uh, the balcony of an apartment to that quarter or third of an acre in your typical suburb to a couple of acres like I had uh, my previous home and learning to live somewhat self-sufficient um, and uh, learning to, um, to treat that land the way it wants to be treated um, give it what it needs, cooperate with nature, etc. Uh, and then I come out here to a 4,000 acre farm where the biggest project right now is um, roughly 350 acres uh, is being, um, uh, the, the, the soil is being um, um, changed. Uh, we're taking it from basically what is a pile of rocks and uh, the goal is, and it's a goal I believe we'll achieve, is um, turning that into 350 acres that has um, over 10% organic matter and is uh, super, super productive. Um, but to me, that's not what I think of when I think permaculture. Mm. 
So, um, but that's just one aspect of it. Uh, Jordan Rubin's dream is to change agriculture, I believe, is, is in essence what he's wanting to accomplish. Um, change those uh, large scale monoculture farms that are just destroying our soil through monocrops, uh, petroleum based inputs, tilling, and our soil is being destroyed. The health of our soil is being destroyed. Therefore, our food is not healthy. Therefore, we are not healthy. Um, the um, huge amount of, um, of unsafe, unhealthy inputs that we put into that process. He's trying to change that. So I appreciate that. I'm here because I believe in that vision. The other side of me, though, that inner hippie that, you know, is um, living on his own little six acre spread and planting um, berries and fruit trees and uh, doing that. I mean, that's, that's, I guess, more of what I think of as permaculture. And um, it's yet totally different than what I do out here when I uh, come and work on this farm. Um, so it's still something that I, I have trouble wrapping my head around. Even though I believe in that vision, it's not what I tend to think of as, as permaculture. Mm. So um, I really have um, the big dream of having my own place be virtually self-sufficient and teaching others to do that. And yet I'm working on a farm that is doing the big scale kind of agriculture. And yet we do both. Uh, the thing that I like about um, the Heal the Planet farm is yes, we're doing this large scale um, stuff. <laughs> we are uh, doing these, these incredibly ambitious projects yeah. that only a few people in the country or the world actually can do. Um, and yet uh, we also have people come out here a couple of times of a year and learn skills that they can take back to that apartment and do on their balcony or do on that quarter acre parcel in the suburbs. And so we're doing both out here. Mm. Um, but again, the, the, uh, the scope of what we're doing here on this farm is what really maybe was a bit of a surprise. I expected hippies, Birkenstocks and, you know, um, probably a little, never mind. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I know where that was headed. Yeah. We come out to this place where I, I think it took me like 10 minutes to drive down the driveway to get to the office. And, right. uh, you know, so it, that was a surprise. But as far as surprises of the course, uh, the course itself, um, no, not at all, other than that it was so good. Um, I, I um, you know, I've been through, I think I mentioned 12 years of college, including law school, a master's degree, et cetera. I've been through a lot of education, and yet the quality of the instruction out here was every bit as good as what I have received anywhere. Um, and so um, maybe that was a surprise in a, in a good sense. Um, I've been to other permaculture courses, um, an advanced course, or one that purported to be an advanced course, um, and uh, was very disappointed. Hmm. So um, having, in fact, had I not come to this one first, you might have been turned off. You to might have been turned off to, yeah, to the whole thing. In fact, oh. I think I, I recall I left that one, um, that other one early. Hmm. And uh, um, so at any rate, um, the instruction here was as good instruction as I've had in my academic pursuits, which have been pretty broad. Hmm. Cool. Uh, there's definitely juice in there. Oh, oh. okay. Let's squeeze a little out. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Two seconds here, two seconds there. People won't even know that, that they weren't next to each other. Yeah, we're uh, good. So, um, and and we're we're basically at time. So, okay. Uh, I don't want to keep you any longer than I need to. Very well. Um, 
Well, if you need to fill in the gap somehow or something didn't come out very well, we can uh, certainly follow up. So you know how to reach me. Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good chatting with you. Yeah, good chatting with you. Goodbye. Bye.